Welcome back everyone, Houston Math Prep here. Imagine that we have some function of x and y, and the graph of this is some surface in 3D space. And we have some level curve for the function here, where z is equal to the same value everywhere on the function. If we think about being located at some point p on this level curve, remember in our last video in our Calculus 3 series, we just talked about the gradient of a function, and how the gradient is always going to be normal or perpendicular to the level curve. And the gradient tells us what direction is the direction of greatest increase at that point. So if we're at point P and we start moving in the direction of the gradient, the Z value for our function will be increasing at the fastest rate possible at that point. Remember that if we simply move in the direction of the level curve, then that's a direction of no change for the Z value of the function. So we know these things about instantaneous rates of change in these directions for our function. The big remaining question then is, what if we want to find the rate of change in a different direction than these directions at point P? So in my picture here, let's say I want to know the instantaneous rate of change in the direction of this vector V. That's what we mean when we talk about a directional derivative. It's the rate of change of a function at a particular point P in the direction of some vector V. And we have a common notation that you'll see for these directional derivatives here, capital D with the direction we want to use as a subscript, and the rest is telling us evaluated at point P on our function. So let's figure out how this might work, and we're going to assume you already know a little bit about the gradient here from our previous video. If we just think of V as a direction and knowing how to find the gradient, then we could think of the rate of change we'll get as the magnitude of the gradient times the cosine of the angle between the gradient and the direction we want to know. Here you can sort of see this in our right triangle. And if we remember a nice formula that we have for the cosine of an angle between two vectors, that'll be the dot product of those vectors divided by their magnitudes. So if we take this formula for cosine of theta, in this case, and put it into our formula above, then we don't have to worry about the angle anymore, and we get this formula just in terms of the two vectors. You can see we can do some simplifying over here on the right. Let's do that. So we get something that looks much simpler. We have the gradient of f evaluated at p times vector v divided by the magnitude of v. But if we look harder at what's left, we should notice that this fraction here that remains a vector divided by its own magnitude, that's just a unit vector in the direction of v. So our formula for the rate of change at a point p in the direction of a vector v will actually be the gradient evaluated at point p, and we'll then take the dot product with v hat, making sure not to forget that we need a unit vector in the direction of v, not just v itself. We're going to work some examples with you now. We want to calculate the directional derivative for our function x squared y cubed. We're going to calculate that directional derivative in the direction of the vector 1, negative 1, at the point, negative 2, comma 1. We've got our formula down here. The directional derivative in the direction of v at the point p on our function is going to be del f, the gradient of f evaluated at p, dot product with v hat. So let's go ahead and first find our del f, that'll be the first thing. Remember our gradient of f, or del f, is just the vector function with partial fx, comma, partial fy. So if I look here, partial derivative of x squared y cubed with respect to x, so the two would come out, we'd get x there, so we'll actually get 2xy cubed, comma, partial derivative with respect to y now, so we'll keep the x squared constant, here the 3 will come out, we'll actually get 3x squared, the power of y will go down by 1, so we'll get 3x squared y squared. That's our del f, now we need del f evaluated at the point p, so we need now del f evaluated at negative 2 comma 1, so we just simply plug in negative 2 into our gradient wherever x is, and plug in 1 into our gradient wherever y is, so that will give us 2 times negative 2 times 1 cubed, comma, 3 times negative 2 squared times 1 squared. If we figure that out, 2 times negative 2 would be negative 4 times 1, so we'll get negative 4. 
comma, 3 times negative 2 squared, that would be 4. 3 times 4 would give us 12 times 1, so we get negative 4, 12. That's our del f evaluated at the point p. Now we need to do the dot product with a v hat, so we'll need to turn v into a unit vector if it isn't already one, which it isn't. So if v is 1, negative 1, and we want to find v hat, remember v hat is going to be that vector divided by its own magnitude. So that's going to be 1, negative 1, divided by the magnitude of this vector here, that'll be the square root of x squared plus y squared, so that'll be 1 plus 1. So we'll get v hat is actually 1 over root 2, comma, negative 1 over root 2. And now we have everything we need to find our directional derivative. So if we take our del f at negative 2, 1, dot our v hat that we found, that would be negative 4, comma, 12, dot 1 over root 2, comma, negative 1 over root 2. Now this is a dot product of two vectors, so when we find the directional derivative, dot product of two vectors gives us a real number, a scalar, which is what we expect for a rate of change, right? So if we do the dot product, we multiply the x components, so negative 4 times 1 over root 2 would be negative 4 over root 2, and we'll add to it whatever we get from multiplying the y components. So 12 times negative 1 over root 2 would be negative 12 over root 2. If we go ahead and add those together then we're going to get negative 16 over root 2. We might do some simplifying here. If we multiply the top and the bottom by root 2, then we'll actually get negative 16 root 2 over 2. And if I reduce the 16 and the 2, we actually get negative 8 root 2. So that's our rate of change in this direction at this point on the surface of our function. And we can tell that because it's a negative rate, that means it would be a direction of decrease on the function. For our next one here, we'll calculate the directional derivative for the function y times e to the xy in the direction of this vector 3 comma negative 2 at the point 0 comma 2. So again, we'll find our del f, our gradient first. Remember that's partial fx comma partial fy. If we take the derivative of y e to the xy with respect to x, our y's are constant multiples here, so I keep my y. Derivative of e to the xy would be itself, but then the chain rule times the derivative of the inside, and the derivative of inside with respect to x would be y. So we actually get a y and another y there. Let's look at our partial fy. This is actually a product rule if we're taking the derivative with respect to y. So doing the product rule, I'll take the derivative of y first, which is 1, leaving the other function alone, e to the xy, plus, now the second half of our product rule, I'll leave the y alone this time, and times the derivative of e to the xy with respect to y. So the derivative of an exponential will be itself, times the derivative of the inside with respect to y. This x would be a constant multiple. So we'll get an x coming out there this time. And if we clean up our del f, we actually get the vector y squared e to the xy, comma, e to the xy times, if we factor that out, we'd actually have 1 plus xy. Okay, so there's our del f. We now need to evaluate at the point p at 0, 2. So our del f, our gradient, evaluated at 0, comma, 2. That means plug in 0 everywhere for x and 2 everywhere for y. If we do that, we'll get 2 squared on the outside, which would be 4. e to the xy would be 0 times 2, so that'd be e to the 0, comma. Same thing here, we'd get e to the 0 times 1, plus x times y, which would be 0 times 2. Okay, so if we evaluate that, e to the 0 is 1, so we get 4 times 1, which is 4 here. And then here we get e to the 0, which is 1, times another 1 in there, so we actually get 4 comma 1. That's our del f evaluated at p. Now we need to figure out our v hat, so we have our v here. 
So v hat is going to be the vector 3 comma negative 2 divided by its own length. Remember that's going to be the square root of x squared, which would be 9, plus y squared, which would be 4. We actually get our v hat is 3 over root 13 comma negative 2 over root 13. And so our directional derivative then will be the gradient evaluated at 0 comma 2 dot v hat so that will be 4 comma 1 dot product with 3 over root 13 comma negative 2 over root 13 and so here we'll get 4 times 3 on the top will be 12 over root 13 plus if we take 1 times this that doesn't change so we get negative 2 over root 13 and so 12 minus 2 over root 13, that will give us 10 over root 13. We'll do one more directional, this time in terms of a function of x, y, and z. So we have our function is the square root of x, y, z. We're going to calculate in the direction of a vector in 3D space now, 1, 2, comma, negative 2, at the point 4, comma, 2, comma 2. So our first thing to do will be to evaluate the gradient. We evaluate the gradient of a function of three variables. That'll be fx, partial fy, and partial fz now. So we'll have three of those to do. So partial fx, what we'll do to sort of think of this differently as a power rule, this will be x, y, z, all to the power one half under this square root. So if we use a power rule idea here, we'll get 1 half x, y, z, all to the negative 1 half. Now derivative with respect to x means that y and z are constant multiples. So we take the derivative of x and that becomes a 1. We're left with y times z. Now partial derivative with respect to y is going to be very similar. We'll still have the 1 half coming out. We'll get x, y, z to the negative one half, all of that's the same, but then the chain rule derivative from the inside, x and z are the constant multiples now. When we take the derivative of y, it drops off and becomes a one, so we actually get xz as the derivative of the inside, and then partial fz, we would get one half. Again, xyz all to the negative one half times the derivative of the inside, z is the variable, xy is the constant multiple, so when we take the derivative of z and it becomes 1, we're left with the constant multiple xy. So we have lots of similarity in our components here. So in our first one we have yz on top, and that is over 2, and then we have this xyz to the negative 1 half, that's a square root in the bottom. You can see a similar thing here, except we have xz on the top, so we'll have xz over 2 root xyz. And then for the last one here, we have xy over the same thing, so xy over 2 square root xyz. Now let's evaluate this at the point p, so del f at the point p, 4, 2, 2. Del f evaluated at 4, comma 2, comma 2. We'll just sort of do these here. So we have y times z, which would be 2 times 2, so that's 4 on the top. All of these are going to be the same, so let's figure this out. 2 times whatever's in the root, and the root's going to be all these things multiplied together. 4 times 2 times 2. So 4 times 2 is 8 times 2 is 16. So the square root of 16, this whole root is going to be 4 multiplied by 2, so we actually get 8 there. So it's all going to be over 8. So now xz would be 4 times 2, so that would be 8 over the same root. And then xy would be 4 times 2, so we get 8 there as well, and 8 in the bottom. And if we reduce all that, I think that's going to be 1 half, comma 1, comma 1. So that's our gradient for the function at the point 4, comma 2, comma 2. Now what we'll need to do is take this vector and do the dot product with v hat. So let's go find v hat. So v hat then is going to be the vector... 1, 2, negative 2, divided by its own length, and if we have three components, that's just the square root of all these things squared and added up, so 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, 
negative 2 squared is also 4. So we get actually 9 in there, right? And the square root of 9 is 3. So I actually get 1 third, 2 thirds, and negative 2 thirds for our components of v hat. So our directional derivative then, our directional derivative in the direction of v at our point then is going to be 1 half comma 1 comma 1 dot product with 1 third comma 2 thirds comma negative 2 thirds. All right, and if we go ahead and do some multiplying here, 1 half times 1 third will give us 1 over 6, plus 1 times 2 thirds will give us 2 thirds, plus 1 times negative 2 thirds will give us negative 2 thirds. Easy arithmetic here, I think 2 thirds minus 2 thirds is 0, so we really just get a directional derivative here of 1 over 6.